What's up YouTube, I'm EVScape and welcome back to another video. Now today we have a Zolra guide coming in for you guys. Now I know what you're thinking. EV, didn't I just see a video of you dying like 400 times at Zolra? I'm gonna go stand here. Alright, we got this. He hit me for a 37 prey range! I'm dead. Damn it! Yes. Yes, you did. If so, what makes you qualified to uh, teach us how to do Zolra? You're gonna die 400 times well since then i've managed to get over 400 kill count at zolra and i thought i really want to make a video kind of going through the things that i wish i knew when i first started since i've only learned so recently i feel like it'd be a good idea to go over the things make a guide from the perspective of someone that's just learnt it going over the things that i wish i knew when I was first starting. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to go over uh, gear setups, how to do each rotation, what Zolra does, and then at the end, this is the thing that I really wanted when I first started. I'm gonna go over each rotation in time and show you guys exactly what to do and exactly where to stand for each rotation, but I'm going to make it in a way that you can start your kill at the same time as I start my kill so I can talk you through your kill as you're doing it. Let's go ahead and jump into the guide. Now, first thing is first, how do we get to Zolandra to have access to Zora in the first place? Well, first thing is first, you need to make sure you have the regicide quest completed, otherwise you won't be able to have access to Zolandra. You don't actually have to complete the quest, you just have to complete it up to the point where you have access to Port Tyrus, but you might as well just complete the quest while you're there anyway. Now, there are really only two ways to get to Zora that you uh, really need to know about. Walking there is just not an option. It would take way too long. First thing is the Zolandra teleport. Now, these are around 9k each on the Grand Exchange. You just simply click the teleport and it will teleport you straight to the entrance of Zora and you board the sacrificial boat from there. Otherwise, you can use a fairy ring if you have access to a fairy ring in your house or potentially even have the quest cape. You can use the fairy ring code BJS and that's going to take you to an island just west of Zolandra and all you have to do is run east from there and you'll be able to have access to Zora. Next thing we need to go over is what stats you're going to need and what gear you should be using. Now in terms of stats, I would highly recommend having 75 mage and 75 range. This is going to give you access to the toxic trident as well as the toxic blowpipe. These are very, very necessary, especially if it's your first time. Now you definitely can kill Zora with lower stats than this, but if it's your first time, you're much better off getting at least 75 mage and 75 range. Anything higher than that is definitely gonna help out. Now, in terms of the gear setup, you want to definitely have a Serpentine Helm for your first try. After you get good at Zora, you've done it a few times, you can swap out the Serpentine Helm for a better mage or ranged helmet, but the Serpentine Helm is going to stop you from getting venomed, which is going to make you take less damage and that way you're going to have to focus on less things. You're going to have an extra inventory spot for another piece of food rather than taking an anti-venom. For the rest of the gear, you definitely just want to wear the best magic gear that you have in terms of cape. You definitely want an occult necklace. You definitely want to try it in the swamp. Arams if you have it. If you can't afford Arams and you only have Mystics, Mystics will work just fine in terms of boots. Eternal boots are obviously going to be the best, but if you can't afford them, just go back to Mystic boots or something like that. Just the best magic gear that you can afford get barrows gloves are very good you can obviously swap that out for a tormented bracelet if you can afford it now the most important thing here for a first time zora killer is a ring of suffering you want to make sure that you definitely have a ring of suffering because that's going to stop you from getting hit by the snakelings over and over again the snakelings will hit you for 13 is their max hit, but they only have one hit point. So if you wear a ring of recoil, it's going to hit them back for one and they will die instantly. If you use a ring of recoil instead of a ring of suffering, that's an extra switch that you have to focus on and it's going to take your attention away from killing the boss. So I would highly recommend using a ring of suffering 
for your first attempts. If you can't afford a Ring of Suffering, a Ring of Recoil will work, but make sure that you have something that will notify you when the recoil goes away, like the OS Buddy Recoil Notifier. That way you know when to put it back on, otherwise you're gonna be taking insane amounts of damage from the Snake Link. In terms of your ranged gear, you just wanna bring, for your first time, four switches, you want to have a body, a legs, the blowpipe, and your accumulator. This is going to allow you to easily switch between your magic and ranged. Now, if you are more confident with your switches, you can take more switches. I personally take six. I know some people that take eight, but for your first try, I would recommend taking four. Now, in terms of what dehyde you want to use, you can use ancient dehyde for some extra prayer bonus, but if you're not very confident, and like I said, it's your first time killing Zora, I would recommend taking some carols because that's going to give you some higher defense bonus. Now, in terms of an inventory setup, you're definitely going to want to take along a ranging potion and a maging potion, as well as one prayer potion. Now, sometimes people will need more than one prayer potion. I did need more than one when I first started. However, with the way that I'm going to teach you how to kill Zora, we're going to be learning one rotation at a time. You will never need more than one prayer potion, so only bring one prayer potion along. Along with that, you want to bring some Karamba ones and some Sharks so that you can do some combo eating because it is your first time, Zora will hit pretty hard. Once you get more experience with killing Zora, you can just take along Monkfish and no Karamba ones whatsoever. On top of this, make sure you have your switches, your range switch and your mage gear. And on top of that, grab a Ring of Dueling and your Zolandra Teleports. If you're not going to be using Zolandra Teleports, bring along a Teleport to a Fairy Ring and your Ring of Dueling as well. The reason we have the Ring of Dueling is so after the kill, we can run along to the Clan Wars portal and reset our stats and then head straight back there. Now we're gonna start getting into some of the mechanics of the boss. Zolra has three different phases at which it can go to during the kill. The first one is the ranging phase. Now the ranging phase is weak to magic attacks, so you're going to want to use magic attacks against it. And when it is active, you also want to use your protect from ranging prayer because it will attack with range. Now the attack looks like this with a little green blob coming out of its mouth. Uh, this is toxic poison, I assume. I don't know for sure, but this is what the ranging attack looks like, and this is what the form looks like. It is the green snake. The next form that Zora has is the melee phase, and this is the red snake. It will only attack with melee, and you can see when it is going to attack. It will attack the place that you have recently been in. If you move out the way of its attack, it won't be able to hit you. So that's the way you get away from the attack in the melee phase. Now the melee phase is weak to magic as well. So you'll definitely want to use magic attacks against it. And on top of that, you won't need to use protection prayers because if you move quickly enough, the melee phase won't actually be able to hit you. The final phase that Zolra has is the mage phase. Now the mage phase attacks with magic and ranged attacks but against this you want to pray mage because the mage attacks are much more accurate and the ranged attacks are quite infrequent but it does attack with both and can hit up to 41 so when the snake is in the blue form it can hit you with both attacks and you can take up to 41 damage so you have to be very very careful and watch your hit points during this phase you want to attack the blue snake with your ranged attacks considering it is weak to range. So just to summarize, the green snake will attack you with range and you wanna pray protect from range and attack it with magic attacks. The melee phase is red and it will attack you with melee. You don't need to pray anything against it and you want to attack with magic attacks. And the blue snake is the magic phase. It will attack you with magic and ranged attacks. You want to pray it protect from magic and you want to attack it with ranged attack. Now, before we jump into the actual killing of the boss, I think I should familiarize you guys with the island that Zol respawns on. This is the island right here. It can pop up in the middle, at the back, or on either side here. So it has four different spots at which it can pop up. Now, during my talk through of each rotation i'm going to be speaking about specific spots on the island of where you need to stand now i'm going to refer to them as numbers so familiarize yourself with the numbers correlating to the spot this spot right here will be position number one this spot right here will be position number two 
Up here, right next to the pillar is going to be position number three. Across the other side of the island where these two rocks are is going to be position number four. One square south of this pillar right here will be position number five. Position number six is on these rocks right here. And position number seven is going to be right down the bottom of the other side. Now I've got a picture up on screen now where all the positions are on the mini map. If you'd like to screenshot this, you can save it for a later use when we're talking through the rotations. If you think that you're gonna forget where all the positions are, go ahead and screenshot that right now and save it to your desktop or somewhere easily accessible. Now, the last thing that I need to talk about before we get into the actual Zolra kills is a little thing called the Jad phase. Now, it is referred to as the Jad phase because it will consistently switch between which attacks it will use. You will only face one Jad phase per rotation. So, with the Jad phase, what you need to remember is that it will start on a certain attack style which I will talk you through during the rotation. During the rotation, every time I say switch, that's when you need to switch your attack style. I've got some image up right now of the Jad phase in action. Every time the snake bobs its head, that's when you need to change your prayers. Now you need to make sure that you're changing your prayers in advance because if you change your prayer as it goes to hit, you are too late. So as it is attacking you with mage, that's when you need to switch to rain. The Jad phase will always be a green snake, so you should always attack it with mage. Now, I think the biggest mistake a lot of people make when they're first trying to learn Zolra is trying to learn every rotation at once. Personally, I think if you were to use one rotation, learn one rotation off by heart and then move on to the next rotation, it's gonna be super easy. Now, you will waste a lot of food and a lot of teleports doing it this way, and you won't get a kill very often at all, but it's going to make it a lot easier to learn the rotations. So I would highly suggest going into the island, attacking the boss, seeing if it's the rotation that you're learning. If it is, continuing the kill. If it's not, teleporting back out and starting the rotation over again till you learn how to do the rotation off by heart. And once you've learned how to do the rotation off by heart, which should only take 10 tries, depending on how good your memory is, then move on to another rotation and so on and so forth. So what I will do is go ahead and talk you through every single rotation. Now make sure you are standing at the sacrificial boat with all of the stuff that you need in your inventory and use your ranging potion and your magic potion before boarding the boat. Once you board the boat, it will roll away to the sacrificial shrine. Now, as long as you don't click anywhere else, you'll be able to just stand here and get ready for the rotation. What I'm going to do next is show you each rotation and I will talk you through each rotation as it's happening. Now, each rotation for every single person will take the exact same amount of time. So if you start your rotation at the same time as me, I'm gonna be able to talk you through the rotation that you're trying to learn. Once again, there are four separate rotations. So start learning rotation one. Once you know rotation one, move on to rotation two. Let's go ahead and jump into rotation number one. So just for an example of what you should be doing to learn the rotations is, let's say we're going in to learn rotation number three. We go in and attack the boss. And if the next phase isn't what we want from rotation number three, we'll simply teleport out and restart the boss fight so we can learn rotation three. So this isn't rotation three, we'd go ahead and teleport out. We're then moved outside of the Zora shrine and we can just simply run back and restart the phase again until we get the rotation that we're looking for. Alrighty guys, so here we are for rotation number one. Now for every single rotation from here, one, two, three, and four. Each rotation, you're going to be starting off in position one with no protection prayers, with your maged attacking gear and your mystic might prayer on. So if you're ready to jump into it, I'm gonna count up to three and say go. And that's when we're going to click to run to position one. Then we're gonna turn on our mystic might prayers. One, two, three, go. So we're gonna run over to position one, turn on our mystic might prayer and get ready to attack the boss. Let's go attack the boss now. Now, 
The next phase is going to be a melee phase. You don't need any prayers for this one either, and you want to stand in position one. The melee phase is popping up right now. So attack the boss. Now when it goes for its second attack, we move to position number two, move now, and we attack the boss again. The next phase is a magic phase. So go ahead and put on your magic prayer and switch to your ranged attacks and stay in position number two. Now the next phase is going to be a ranged phase and we wanna go move over to position number five. Let's go now, turn on our range protect and run over to position number five. Standing in position number five, we're gonna attack the boss. And the next phase is going to be a melee phase, so no prayer required. We're going to turn off our ranged protection prayer now and get ready for the melee phase. Now, when you're standing in position number five for the melee phase, you do not need to move at all. The boss will not be able to attack you. So let's go ahead and attack the melee phase now. The next phase is going to be a magic phase, and that is also going to be in position number five. Get ready to turn your mage protection prayer on now, and go ahead and switch to your ranged attacking gear. The boss will pop up, and let's go ahead and attack it now. The next phase is going to be a ranged phase, and you want to go over and stand in position number three, right next to the pillar. Turn on your ranged protection now, and change to your magic attacking gear. Now, the next phase is going to be a magic phase. You still want to stand in position number three, but halfway through the phrase, we're going to have to move over. So change to your magic protection prayer now and, and to your ranged attacking gear. Let's go ahead and attack the boss. Now, when I say we want to run over to position number four, let's run over to position number four now. From position number four, we're going to have to get ready for the JAD phase, which is coming up next. It's going to be a ranged first jad phase. So let's change to range right now and put in our magic attacking gear. Let's get ready to switch between our protection prayers, starting with range and then switching to mage and switch, 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 switch. And now we're gonna run over to position number three over across the other side and the next phase is going to be a melee phase. I'm gonna stand in position number one and we're going to attack the melee phase. This is the last phase of the rotation. So get ready to move to position number two right now to avoid the attack. Now the next phase is gonna be a ranging phase. If you're close to the kill, you can go ahead and finish it off here. But if you're not close to the kill, go ahead and teleport out and restart rotation number one. All right, guys, so this is going to be rotation number two. As always, we're going to be standing in position number one with our mage attacking gear as well as our mage attacking prayer on and no protection prayers. Let's go ahead and run down there on the count of three. One, two, three, and go. So we run down, turn on our Mystic Might, get ready to attack the boss. Now the next phase is going to be a melee phase. So we don't have to worry about our protection prayers, but we do have to prepare to move to position number two, halfway through the phase. Melee phase is coming up right now. Let's go ahead and attack the boss. And when it goes for its second attack, let's go ahead and move to position two. Let's move to position two now. Now, the next phase is gonna be a mage phase. So turn on your magic protection prayer and switch over to your ranged attacking gear and let's attack the boss. The next phase is going to be a ranged phase. So prepare to switch to your range protection prayer now and run over to position number five. Put it on your mage attacking gear and let's go ahead and attack the boss. Now the next phase is gonna be a magic phase. However, we are gonna to have to switch to long ranged on our blowpipe so that we can attack it from the position we're standing in. So get ready to turn on your magic protection prayer. Let's do that now and let's switch to long range on our blowpipe so that we can attack it from the position we're standing in so we don't run into the toxic gas. Next phase will be a melee phase so we don't have to do use any protection prayers but we will need to switch back to rapid on our blowpipe so that we can get a faster kill. So let's go ahead and get ready to switch over to our magic attacking gear. Let's do that now and switch back to accurate on your toxic trident. Let's go ahead and attack the melee phase. Now the next phase will be a ranged phase. So get ready to turn on your range protection prayer and we wanna run over to position number three. Let's go now. Let's go ahead and attack the boss from position number three. Now after this is gonna be a mage phase and we wanna run back over to position number four and turn on our magic, 
protection prayer and go ahead and put on our ranged attacking gear let's do that now fantastic let's go ahead and attack the boss now the next phase is going to be a ranged first jad phase Get ready to turn on your ranged protection prayer and put on your mage attacking gear. Let's go ahead and do that now in pre preparation. And the jab phase will go ahead and pop up now. Get ready to switch your prayers over. Let's switch now. Switch. 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 Get ready to run over to position number three. Run now. Position number one we want to run to. Let's go ahead and stand in position number one. Now the next phase will be a melee phase. Don't have to pray anything. And this will be the last phase of the rotation. Before it starts again, let's move to position number two right now. Now the next phase will be a ranged phase. So if you're close to the kill, pray ranged and go ahead and finish it off. If you're not close to the kill, go ahead and teleport out now and restart the phase. Alrighty guys, so this is rotation number three and as always with the first phase of the rotation We're gonna be starting in position number one with our mage attacking gear and no protection prayers So let's go ahead and get started on the count of three one two three go So let's run over to position number one turn on our mystic my prayer and attack the boss now the next phase is going to be a ranged phase you are going to want to pray range against this one and stay in position number one. Let's go ahead and turn on our range protection prayer now. And the boss will spawn. Let's go ahead and attack the boss. Now the next phase is going to be a melee phase. And we want to go run over to position number six across the other side of the map. We can go ahead and get ready to do that. And we're going to run over to position number six now. Turn off our range protection prayer because we don't need a protection prayer for this one. Now we want to stand in position number six. Once we are in position number six, when the boss goes to attack us for the first time, we can go ahead and run to position number seven. Let's go ahead and run now. And when the boss goes to attack us for a second time, let's go ahead and run back to position number six now. Perfect. Next phase is mage. So get ready to pray mage and put on your ranged attacking gear. And let's go ahead and attack the boss. The next phase is going to be a ranged phase, so get ready to turn on your ranged protection prayer and run over to position number three. Let's go ahead and run now. Turn on your ranged prayer, switch to your magic attacking, and let's go ahead and attack the boss. Now the next phase is going to be a magic phase, so get ready to turn on your magic protection prayer and switch over to your ranged attacking gear now. Let's attack the boss. Now after this phase is going to be a ranged phase again. Let's go ahead and get ready to turn on our range protection prayer and then run over to position number five. Now, run over to position number five with your range prayer on, switch to your magic attacks. Let's go ahead and attack the boss. Now, the next phase is going to be a ranged phase again. So don't get bamboozled. Don't change your prayer. It will be a ranged phase for a second time in a row. That's coming up right now. The following phase after this one is going to be a mage phase. So we get prepared to change to our magic protection prayers and put on our ranged attacking gear. Let's go ahead and do that now. And let's run over to position number three. I'm going to stand in position number three and attack the boss. Now, keep in mind, the next phase is going to be a jad phase. This one is going to be a magic first jad phase. So let's get ready to switch over to our magic attacking gear and keep our protect from mage on and get ready for this jad phase. Let's get ready to switch over our protection prayers. When I say switch, let's go ahead and switch, 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 switch 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 and switch now the next phase is going to be a magic phase so let's go ahead and keep our magic prayers on and let's go ahead and attack the boss now this is the last phase of the rotation as with all the rotations it will restart a rotation next the next phase will be the ranged phase so if you're close to the kill go ahead and try and finish it off on this phase if you aren't close to the kill, go ahead and teleport out and restart the rotation there. Alrighty guys, so this is the fourth and final rotation. As always, we're going to be starting off in position number one with no protection prayers on. On the count of three, let's get into it. One, two, three, go. 
So we're going to run over, turn on our Mystic Might, and get ready to attack the boss as always. Now, the next phase is going to be a Magic Phase. So get ready to Pray Mage and put on your ranged attacking gear. Let's go ahead and do that now. So change over now and get ready to attack the boss. Let's attack the boss. The next phase is actually going to be a ranged phase and we're gonna to want to run over to position number five. So get ready to turn on your range protection prayer when that happens. Still got about five seconds before that goes ahead. Let's go ahead and change prayers now and run over to position number five. Get ready to attack the boss once we're in position number five. Let's attack. And the next phase is actually going to be a mage phase. So get ready to switch over to your magic protection prayers in about two more attacks. Let's go ahead and switch now and switch over to our ranged attacking gear. Now we want to stick in position five for the next phase as well, which is going to be a melee phase. Now, after the second attack on the next melee phase, we want to move over, but we'll prepare for that when we get there. Let's get ready to change into our magic attacking gear, and let's do that now. Get ready for the melee phase. No need to have a protection prayer for this one. Now, after the second attack, let's get ready to jump over to position number three. Let's run to position number three now, and get ready to turn on our range protection prayer. Once you're over here, you can attack the boss again if you still have time. You can get one hit in. Let's go ahead and do the ranged phase now now the next phase is going to be another ranged phase so get ready to attack the next range phase standing in position three still halfway through the next phase we're going to need to run back over to position number five and prepare for a mage phase so while we're attacking the boss here let's get ready to run over to position number five and turn on our magic protection prayer let's go ahead and run over now and get ready to switch over to your mage protection prayer switch now while you're still attacking the boss, we can switch over to mage because it won't attack you anymore. And here comes the mage phase. Switch over to your ranged attacking gear. Let's go ahead and attack the boss. Now the next phase is going to be a ranged phase. We want to go back over to position number three. So let's prepare for that. Let's go ahead and switch our protection prayers now because the boss has stopped attacking us. And get ready to run over to position number three. Let's run over to position number three now with our ranged protection prayer on. Let's go ahead and attack the boss. Standing in position number three. Now the next phase is going to be a mage phase. So get ready to switch back to our magic protection prayers and put on our ranged attacking gear. Let's go ahead and switch now. And let's attack the boss. Now the next phase after this will be a jad phase. It is a mage first jad phase. So get ready to switch over to your magic attacking gear and leave your protect from magic on. Let's go ahead and switch over now. And leave our magic protection prayers on and get ready for the jad phase. Get ready to switch over your prayers when I say so and switch. Switch, 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 and hold on your magic protection prayer now because the next phase is mage. Let's go ahead and attack the boss. Now, this is the last phase of the rotation. Next up will be a repetition. It goes back to range. So if you are close to the kill, go ahead and finish off the kill now. But if you're not close to the kill, go ahead and teleport out and restart the rotation. Now, the last thing that I want to mention before we end the guide, if you can't do a kill while you're listening to me talk you through it and you would prefer to see what it looks like, I would recommend going to zolraguide.com. This is what I personally use when I was getting started. I think it would be easier to have someone talk me through it, but if you prefer to look at things rather than listen to them, you can go on zolraguide.com and it shows you the phase possibilities. So phase one is always the range phase and you stand here. Phase two, these are the three distinct possibilities you can get. Let's say you get a melee phase for the second phase, you click on melee, it then tells you that phase three is a mage where you stand here and then there's the two phase four possibilities. Now, once you find out which is phase four, you click on it, let's say it's this one, and then it will tell you what the rest of the phases are in that rotation. Then when you start again, you can just go ahead and reset and jump back to the start and click on different rotations. It tells you exactly what to do. So I'd highly recommend checking that out if you can't get a kill whilst listening to me talk you through it. So that is pretty much it guys, there's not really much else to the boss. Once you learn the rotations and you get them down and you become comfortable on the island, it's a very very simple boss to kill. You can get upwards of 20 kills per hour if you are really good at it. 
Most of the time though, you're going to expect to get somewhere between 10 and 15 kills. So while most people will say you can profit anywhere between 2.5 and 3 mil from Zora, I think most of the time you're going to expect to profit somewhere between 700k and like 1.4 mil when you're just getting started. Obviously, when you upgrade your gear, get better at it, you can move up to those higher tiered per hour rates. But to start with, expect around 700k per hour. And just while you learn, guys, just expect to use a lot of money in supplies and teleports and stuff like that. But just remember, once you get this down pat, you're going to be able to make a lot of money from this boss. And it is super, super fun to do. Honestly, my favorite boss in the game to fight. Uh, every single fight is different. So it's always mixing it up. And uh, it's just really fun to do. And you can make a lot of money. So that's going to wrap it up for today's guide. If this really helped you guys, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and let me know down in the comment section below if this guide helped you get your first kill. If it did help you get your first kill and you know someone else that is trying to learn Zora, make sure you recommend this video to them. I put a lot of time into this video, so if it helped you out, that's what I need to hear. I need to hear that it's helped you guys out. Uh, so let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I will catch you in the next one tomorrow. Take it easy.